Omni. Keep your warmth, not your sweat. Mila, making premium German appliances since 1899. And by Ski Vermont, winter in its original state. This week, I explore the steep and deep of the South American Andes. On the freestyle file, we meet mogul sensation Chloe de Four La Pointe. And then Josh Foster helps us adopt our skiing to the terrain. If you're one who lives in denial and refuses to believe that the ski season ends in the spring, then this week's show is for you. Argentina and Chile are home to some of the world's best skiing, and it happens all summer long. We're going to start our South American tour in Chile's central ski region, located just a short distance from Santiago. Three ski areas offer over 23,000 acres of skiable terrain, with all the amenities you'd expect to find in a world-class ski vacation. So, today we're at El Colorado, and in combination with Valle Nevado behind me and La Parva to the north, the three form South America's largest ski area. Now, El Colorado is known for its more budget-minded rootsy vibe, and at only an hour away from Santiago, it's a local's top pick. We have uh, 20 plus lifts, we have 77 runs. We have, uh, we, every night we groom 55 kilometers, and it's a good mix of, of, of uh, groom terrain and, and, and off-piste uh, terrain trails within the ski resort. And then the boundaries of the ski resort are very, very demanding, sometimes a little dangerous, but people get off the cliffs and, and go into the road that connects us, us and a neighboring resort. We've been here 61 years. Yeah, the founder of the resort is an American family, and they actually started before in the first lift in 1938 and, and growing since then. You can buy a combined ticket pass between Colorado and Valle Nevado or Colorado and La Parva and or La Parva and Valle Nevado. And if you have a, a ski ticket, a date ski ticket, and you jump into the neighboring resort, you pay kind of a third of the full price of the, of the, of the ticket and you can ski there. Our season normally starts at the beginning of June, sometimes late May, and like now finishes at the end of September or beginning of October. The high season is uh, mid-July till mid-August, just one month. The Andes are very different. This is alpine terrain. There's no grass or trees or anything. And, and it's just rocks and snow and ice. And don't forget, we are 80 kilometers from Aconcagua, who's in Argentina, is the highest mountain outside the Himalayas. El Plomo itself is a big weather attracting mountain for uh, 5,450 meters. And, and the weather can change any minute. We have glaciers. And, and in that case, you should take care, you should know where you're going. The fog comes, especially in September, the fog comes in the afternoons and you get lost. And so have the maps of your resorts and also have a cell phone available to call security to guide you around. This is high terrain. We had an awesome morning skiing the corn at El Colorado, but dense cloud forced an early end to the day. But by the next morning, Mother Nature had unleashed 40 centimeters of fresh Andean powder and, well, why don't we let the footage tell the rest of the story? Oh my God, this is the best day ever. And I can't believe how lucky I am today. And if you're doubting if the snow really is this good, and maybe you're thinking, oh, they do some computer work back in the editing room to make it look awesome. Well, the skiing is this good and then some. And who would have thought all this could happen on the last week of the ski season? Today is September 28th, and that's like late April back in the Northern Hemisphere. There's something about Andean powder that makes a long trip more than worthwhile. In fact, tonight I'm gonna have a beer for all my friends back in Canada who are just dying to ski. But hey, you're not watching this to listen to me talk. So check this out.
with the weather moving in and our summer legs catching up with us, there seemed like no better time to check out the capital city of Santiago. Santiago is home to six million residents and is a world of contrasts. Quiet parts mesh with urban chaos, while buildings dating back as far as 500 years hold their own alongside the most modern architecture. After the break, we visit the oldest ski area in South America. We've made our way along the windy international trade route between Chile and Argentina. The road to Portillo is like slowly unwrapping one of the best Christmas presents ever. It's September, and with each switchback, commanding views of the Andes remind you of why you're not on a golf holiday. And then when the road plateaus, you'll find perhaps one of the most beautiful mountain resorts in the world. Portillo, Chile has been South America's premier ski resort destination for more than 50 years and is famous for its majestic Andean setting and powder. I'm lucky enough to have skied all over the world and I'm trying to think of a place as beautiful as Portillo, Chile. Down below me at the heart of it is this lake called Laguna del Inca, while huge Andean peaks jet up on either side. And the diamond on the ring, the uber classic Hotel Portillo. Now this week I'm joined by my exotic Chilean friend, Vicho Fernandez. No, trust me dude, I'm your wingman. Vicho works for a company called SouthAmericaSki.com and they do custom ski tours down here in South America. And ladies, you can hire Vicho as your private guide. See, you gotta trust me, huh? You like that? Yeah. All right. Portillo definitely defies a North American cookie cutter ski resort formula. In fact, the whole resort might be defined as a functional ski museum. Not much changes from year to year, but trust me, in this case, it's a good thing. I think Portillo is unique because we decided a long time ago that because of the terrain here and because of the, the, the area around us that Portillo would never, could never pretend to be a big uh, mega resort and that was not what we really wanted anyway. So we decided to do something different and keep it the way it is and we've developed a viable and, and uh, pleasant place to, to be and it, it, it works and it's worked for a long time and as long as the public stays with us we'll keep operating it this way. Portillo has 13 lifts now uh, covering uh, an area which uh, pretty much goes halfway around the hotel here. We're in a kind of a bowl We ski on everything that, that uh, has snow on it and some, some things that don't. Uh, right now, the, even our runs that run down to the lake and you, where you have to come back in across the ice are open, so that gives you uh, an idea of how far people will go to ski here. Portillo, uh, attracts uh, families and families tend to to come back year after year generation after generation and we have uh, we have grandfathers here that were here when learning how to ski when I first came here and they're bringing back their grandchildren now to learn to ski The common thing about people who come here is that they like this kind of atmosphere and ski area and skiing that we have here. What we offer is what people really want and, and this is what we've tried to, to maintain over these years. Basically we are a family resort but we also cater to a lot of very fine skiers who come here both for off-piste extreme skiing and for uh, race training. So we get a pretty interesting mixture of different personalities and people here.
The Freestyle File, in partnership with Columbia, proud supporter of the Canadian Freestyle Ski Team and its athletes. Hi, I'm Chloe Spolapoint. I'm 21 years old. I am in the Canadian Freestyle Ski Team. I live in Montreal and I grew up skiing in the Laurentians. Uh, when I was young, I was inspired by Jennifer I. When I saw her uh, at Mont Tremblant during a World Cup, she was doing 360 with crab. I was so impressed and I said one day I'm gonna be there and yeah, it happened. The highlight of my career uh, was at the Olympic in 2010 in Vancouver, finishing five at the 18 years old. For sure, that's the best moment. Before a competition run, I think uh, when I'm, I'm at the top of the course, I'm just trying to enjoy the moment, you know? It's so fun to ski, why in competition it shouldn't be? So I, I'm just trying to do the same thing as in training. My long-term goal would be uh, at Sochi in 2014. Also, I, I would love to be with my two sisters uh, there. But for sure, 2014 is in my mind. Uh, I have to ski well, and I have I worked hard to get there, so I'm gonna be in Sochi. Coming up, the incredible steeps of Las Leñas, Argentina. Now it's time for this week's web poll. Where would you most like to ski in the Southern Hemisphere? Is it A, Australia, B, New Zealand, C, Chile, or D, Argentina? Log on to snowsportsculture.com today and take the poll. We've made our way from Chile over the Andes to Las Leñas, Argentina, known as an expert skier's paradise. With some of the best steeps in the world, Las Leñas has more lift service terrain than just about any resort in the Western Hemisphere. I've met up with good friend and extremely Canadian guide, Steve Mayer. Well, looks like a perfect day to get our shred on, Stevie. Oh uh, yeah. Any thoughts on where we should head first? Arriba, for Mercurio. Vamonos! <laughs> No, down here in Las Leñas, the experience for the North American crowd is going to be a wild because we have an excellent big mountain for advanced skiers and you need more than a week. You need to come back. Just one trip is not going to be enough for you to explore this excellent mountain. I've been coming down to Las Leñas for eight years now, and my first impressions of the place, I looked up and just saw relentless vertical. It's just an amazing mountain. You can get off the top. As far as lift access skiing, it's, if not the best, definitely some of the best in the world. You get off the top, you can ski 270 degrees, and that's all without having to hike. I ski in a lot of places in the world, but the difference uh, down here is that we have the two uh, extremes, I think, which is we have a very nice terrain for the family and for the beginners. We have the longest uh, beginner run in South America, a green run and pretty flat, which is Venus. And also we have very nice and steep couloirs and great uh, off-piste and powder skin. One of the great things uh, in Las Leñas is that the whole family, or we all finish the day on just one base. So we all get together down there and we have great programs for kids and family. If you bring your family here, you, you leave your kids at the ski school and by the end of the day, they're gonna be waiting for you at the base and happy for sure. That last round wasn't too bad. That was a sweet corn. 
What do you say? Should we check out Eduardo? Sounds good. Let's do it. Skiing in La Flanus is definitely like skiing in Europe in that once you're off the groomed run, you're pretty much in the backcountry. If you look around, there's no signs, there's no fences, and once you're out there, you're pretty much assuming all the risks the mountain has to offer. It's pretty wild. I have about three favorite runs. One is Canaleta de Eduardo, or Eduardo's Culoar. And I love that run uh, when I have to open it in a powder day because it's pretty long. It's about a thousand meters long. And that's is one of the big difference between down here and North America, where you have beautiful runs, but they are short if you compare with Las Leñas. The Audi Alpine Report, brought to you by Audi, proud sponsor of the Canadian Alpine Ski Team. Five, seven, Come on, ben. Come on, ben. Grew up in Invermere, a uh, small town, you know, it gets really busy in the summers. Skied in Panorama, my mother and father have uh, both been involved in the ski racing world. My mother, Shelly, had coached uh, Winter River Valley, my home club, for 15 years or so, so they've both been ski coaches and have known the sport for a long time. Coming through the ranks, you know, I, I had a bit of a struggle there. Uh, I was too old for the BC team, so I was on my own for a couple of years. I was doing construction, you know, masonry, odd jobs like that, just to pay certain bills. Ended up getting invited with the, with the national team and, um, you know, proved, proved myself, took, uh, took advantage of my opportunities, and I'm here now. I'm a pretty active person. Anything between hockey, kiteboarding, cliff jumping, dirt biking, you know, racing my uh, street bike on the track, anything with adrenaline, love it. Proud moments. I mean, Val Gardena for sure, scoring my first World Cup points. You know, first World Cup podium, Sochi. That that was just unbelievable. And and also just my last season. You know, only scoring points in six races and ending up being. Uh, you know, top 15 in the world, coming from starting somewhere around 70th, it's it's a huge jump and it, it's just been a whirlwind. How is riding a horse like skiing? Stick around, you'll find out after the break. Ski Tips with Josh Foster. Sponsored by Canada's favorite family ski resort, Big White, in a Thompson Okanagan near Kelowna, BC. You know when you see a really good skier, they're really smooth and fluid. It hardly looks like they're moving at all. But then sometimes, you know, a newer skier, they get kind of bounced around and it's really rough when they're skiing down the slope. You know, my good buddy Steve Hancock at Whistler, he had a really good way to describe this. A pretty interesting analogy. If you've ever ridden a horse, you see a beginner horseback rider, they're bouncing all over the place and it looks like they're moving everywhere. But then if you compare that to a jockey racing, maybe in a steeplechase or something like that, the jockey doesn't look like they're moving at all. But here's the thing. It's the beginner horseback rider that isn't moving and the jockey is moving with the horse. Come on with me and I'll show you how that works on a pair of skis. Have a look here in this bumpier terrain. If I want to stay smooth, I need to move with it. It's the terrain that's changing and I need to be adaptable, sometimes even proactive, so that I can have a nice smooth ride. Things change just a little bit here on this smooth terrain now. I don't need to be as active with my legs. 
but I'm still moving with the terrain. It's flowing, being a bit adaptable. I can sense what's coming up and I'm being responsive with my legs. That's what's going to give me a smooth ride. So to create that smoothness in my skiing, I need to really be able to move with the terrain. How you're going to move with the terrain is you need to be active with your legs. You can almost think of being really supple and soft with your legs like this in the bumpier terrain, but then when you get onto the smooth stuff, you can be a little bit stiffer with the legs, but you're always moving with the terrain, much like that jockey is always moving with the horse. Let's go try a few more turns down here. So because the terrain is changing all the time, I need to be moving with it if I want to have that smooth ride. So if you feel like it's bumpy and rough, maybe soften the legs up a little bit. Thanks to Steve at Whistler for that one. I hope it works for you too. From beautiful Big White Ski Resort, Canada's favorite family resort just outside Kelowna, BC, I'm Josh. We'll see you next time. It's time to wrap up our visit to South America. And as you dust off the clubs and prepare the bike for summer, remember, you don't necessarily have to pack away the boards. Skiing the endless vertical and dry powder of the South American Andes is something I would suggest every skier adds to their bucket list. Take it from me, you won't regret it. That's it for this week. Until next time, I'm Joe Lammers. Ski Television has been brought to you by Columbia's Omni Heat. Keep your warmth, not your sweat. Mila, making premium German appliances since 1899. And by Bollet. If you never try, you'll never see.